What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of 7th Column Radio, 7CR for short. I'm your host, Tibbercat, and we're here with my co-host, Fates Honestly. Pyro. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> What's going on, everyone? We This is our first episode of the podcast. Let's just take a second to talk about ourselves. Uh, my name is Tibbercat. I've been a Destiny player since the D1 beta. I've played other games but along the way, but I always come back to Destiny because it's always felt like home. Um, I been, mainly play on Xbox, and I mean Titan. I do play on PC now that Crosssave is a thing. Thank you, Bungie. <laughs> Fates, what about you? Uh, myself, personally, I've uh, I've been playing since uh, The Dark Below uh, came out all oh, December, uh, around Christmas time that year. Um game was one of the options uh with my ps4 and uh been playing destiny ever since i haven't uh, regretted the the decision out of those uh the three options there um obviously it just said ps4 uh i am a hunter because we are the best and hunters are great <laughs> sorry i almost laughed there um um i will be touching pc once uh new light comes out oh. sweet sweet so as you can already tell, we always we like ribbon each other about our classes. <laughs> we like to honestly, without even meaning to, we have opposite views when it comes to the crucible. Example: I am a firm believer that with it, when it comes to choosing your weapons, if it's something you're comfortable with, you can outplay the meta. Fates, on the other hand, what do you think of it? Uh, I believe you can uh, adapt to the meta and uh, be even better i mean uh, when i say meta i don't mean uh you know exactly like uh, it doesn't have to be you know top tier you know you don't god, have to use recluse rolls. you don't yeah, have to you use don't ha exactly you don't have to use recluse there are other things in the meta that work that are equally top tier and you may say but thanks the recluse is amazing it is but uh i mean I think uh, there's a little credit to uh, what uh, Tibber is uh, saying as well. All right. We'll see. As you can see, we can talk about it. We can disagree along the way. But at the end of it, we're still cool with each other. We That's honestly where the idea for this whole podcast came from. Then Fates and I were talking, and we're just like, dude, this would be perfect for us <laughs> to actually record, and people might actually listen to us because we have so opposite views on it that it's nice to see both sides of the coin sometimes. So when Without we, uh without uh, attacking each other oh tr add. truth <laughs> so that's one of the goals that we have this so throughout this podcast as we talk about things we don't want to just point out what is wrong um yeah, it's, it's not it, about complaining it's not about solutions. complaining. it's all about the solutions whatever we can uh, say that if this is what a problem is how do we fix it um and, one and of, go ahead oh, go ahead uh, it's not to say that our solutions are the only options, but I think it's a uh, a good way to uh, start a dialogue within like the Destiny community. Exactly. Anything, you know? So, one of the examples that we like to point out, one I'd mask, even I as a Titan, say that it makes me where I don't really want to use another exotic because it offers too much for the neutral game. How do I fix that? Well, keep the radar because that is one of the things that makes one I'd mask intrinsic, but shorten it. Don't make it where I can see somebody way on the other side of the map. Shorten it to like anything. If they shoot me in there within a 20 meter range, make it where I can see that. And that's a fair compromise. I can still have a, the exotic perk, but it's not overpowered to the point that I don't feel like that I can't benefit from something else. Exactly. I like that. I mean, I like that uh, solution. It keeps it keeps a uh, an exotic viable and special, but it also kind of reins it in a little bit, you know. Exactly. And of Which, all of these come through patches and whatnot. So speaking of patches, Tuesday, what are you looking forward to, Fates? Uh, the mountaintop changes would be a great one to start with since this is a uh, Crucible podcast, um, predominantly, I should say. True. But uh, yeah, I, I would like the changes to the mountaintop since I haven't bothered to work on the mountaintop <laughs> quest yet. <laughs> I started <laughs> offhand. Like when it first was a thing, I didn't play a lot of comp to get it um so the fabled points i was kind of gonna hope to knock out after the fact but um i was going to try and work on it and i noticed that i'm 
not closed, but it was close enough to start working. And when they announced these changes, I was like, I was all for it because it's going to take it pretty close. I'm not one of those lucky people that when it, the patch goes live, is going to have the quest done because they worked at it so hard. My hat's off to them, though. Like, oh, yeah. This is a pain in the butt quest. <laughs> Lot, launchers are very... I feel like they're unpredictable. <laughs> like I, I feel like I, I, I body somebody, and sometimes they will go die. Sometimes they won't. I, uh, I have been killed uh, repeatedly by like a team of dudes rocking fighting lion this week. It was <laughs> awful. Well, it was probably the worst thing I've ever encountered. Well, they, like, that, well, part of that's because Iron Banner is giving bonus progress toward that quest once it goes live. I wasn't even playing Iron Banner. Oh, <laughs> I was playing. Quick Never play mind. These dudes, it was just. I mean, it was just, I mean, hats off to these dudes because they were the best grenade launching people I have ever met. Like, I was just like, all right, you know what? You, you got me. <laughs> when, <laughs> um, when the go changes are going to be pretty nice for the players that are, uh, play, oh, yeah. do play uh, strikes to try and get them. Uh, yeah. I honestly don't feel like they needed to change that quest too much. Uh, I felt like it was pretty okay. Um the de the deaths resetting progress or not resetting progress but uh, detracting from progress um, I could kind of understand because I mean hey it strikes like I feel I mean, like most strikes are what like ten minutes long and most yeah. people generally don't die but I mean uh, I mean I, I, I think I've died by the architects my fair share yeah yeah I mean it does I mean it happens but um I think. Uh, I think it's the start of them trying to uh, get people back into strikes because, I mean, the main complaint with strikes right now is it's boring, uh, yeah. unrewarding. Um, so, I mean, it's a, I think it's, you know, a baby step in the right direction. I, I know, like me strikes. personally, I don't run them that often just because um, I was I like one it. of the guys that didn't finish the Season 6 requirement for the Service Revolver. So, I have no oh. Service Revolver in my... Uh, Loot pool for now you. until they fix that. Hopefully, maybe that comes with this patch. I, uh, I'm crossing my fingers. I got my first one yesterday. Had no clue I completed the uh, the quest or whatever for it. Um, but yeah, I apparently have one. Uh, the ability to get it. I, it was a big surprise, and I uh, I like it. I like that it's a uh, 180 uh, primary. It's, nice, uh, nice. It's nice. I got you know a decentish PVP role. So this isn't the first time they've changed uh, quests though for for weapons. I believe the first one was back. Um... For the Ace of Spades, they changed the yes. five invader kills with hand cannon. Um, but again, I mean that that it's nice that they're paying attention to things like that, like with, because I want to say that was around the time the sleeper simulator needed to be reined in. And Oof. if you had invader come in with super simulator and you tried going for him with a hand cannon, it just wasn't going to end well for you. <laughs> Straight deleted. <laughs> Pretty much, like I, I remember that. Um, Unless you're invader, I remember was... getting hate mail. After using after using the a hand cannon, getting the PVE mobs from a teammate, like it was the match made with this dude. He's like, "You're just trying to get the uh, Ace of Spades. Why, why can't you be like a uh, a good player and get it when before the quest changed?" Like the guy was literally complaining about you bringing more people quest. into the getting of the weapon. Like it made no sense. It, get, gatekeepers, man. That's, that's Pretty much. That is. I mean, but. Hey, to say that, what can you do uh, exactly um yeah i mean they've done it before they're doing it now i think uh, they're kind of uh open to uh you know fixing some things changing things uh that the community uh once changed and uh you know hopefully uh we see kind of some some more of it going forward i mean the changes to the reckoning reckoning are uh another huge huge oh, thing that's... happening definitely one i'm looking forward to because when it started um i did tier one i did tier two when tier three was a thing i want to say i only ran tier three like three times because it was so difficult as a solo player going in trying to queue up with a team and the team and be coordinated or... enough to get across the bridge and everything without having a warlock running well which that's going to be a whole other topic, I'm sure. Like We're going to talk about supers and how they've become kind of niche for certain things. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, I agree. The change, uh, you know, anything that kind of gets people in more into content and 
kind of keeps content relevant, I think is uh, definitely a win in, win in my book. <laughs> of course. Um, I like I mean, the fact, I mean, I believe it was in the director's cut two because three was the PvP cut. They pretty much yeah. said that the Reckoning was just a everything they did not <laughs> want to do in PvE. Enemies spawning behind players, um, getting swarmed from both sides. They've never wanted... They, I mean, even looking back to, uh, to D1 till now, before Reckoning, there's never been PvE encounters mm-hmm. like that. Even in raids, where that's supposed to be the hardest content in the game. Yeah, they didn't do that. So I can understand them wanting to kind of get that fixed. Bring it in, yeah. Uh, anything that gets me that uh, bear rations quicker is uh, good for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That heck in it, man. <laughs> I've died to that thing by so many times on oh. Iron Banner this week. I'm like, There's I know it's good, but it's it's one of those things like so, if it's so good that it makes it where you don't want to use anything else in the, the sandbox, I feel like it, it needs to be reined in. Um, so we should talk about the recluse then too. <laughs> well, that, that leads right into our next thing. Synergy builds yeah. versus meta builds. So the meta build right now Almost every build that you run across with in Crucible, whether it's Iron Banner, Quick Play, Comp, nine times out of ten, somebody's running Recluse. Can we agree to oh, that? Yeah. Absolutely. There's I mean, teams of them. They, they, they come from everywhere. It's awful. <laughs> what do you think about <laughs> using all bows? I'm sorry, what? What do you think about using a bow instead of Recluse? A bow? Uh, I was using a bow yesterday, actually, just uh, kind of personal. I like bows. Uh, I like bows. Um, I like using, I think bows are like the ultimate team shot. Um, I'm not going to argue that one. That one's solid. That's a solid take. Um, there, I mean, I have a subtle calamity, for example. I can do like 150-ish, 100, around there, 150-ish to the head uh, precision damage. And literally, if I can't clean them up, somebody else can. I mean. It's well, I, and, and I, don't, I don't know. They just feel really smooth. I like bows a lot. I like that addition to the game originally. I don't use them too much, but I, I stumbled across uh, a video today where they were talking about synergy builds versus meta builds, and that sometimes under the right, when you pair the right weapons with the right exotic, you can take on these meta builds and you can actually hold your own. And the one that he was talking about in particular was. The Lemonark bow with on the hunter class using the lucky pants and a 110 hand cannon. So the hardest hitting archetype. And what he would do was with the Lemonark, he would uh, use the bow, get his headshot. And if he got the headshot, they usually wouldn't die, even to the burn. Yeah. But it would proc lucky pants so that he could swap to the hand cannon and get bonus aim assist. And all he had to do was land a body shot. And the the, oh, yeah. the opponent was down. Clean him. It, and, uh, the lucky pants are nice. I uh, I like. I, it's not like a crazy overpowered exotic. And if you can pair it like that, I mean, if you can pair it with things, it's uh, it's a it's a it's a really good exotic. It's, I'm actually gonna like tonight uh, when I do go live. I'm gonna be trying to go try. I'm gonna be playing on my hunter, and I'm gonna be trying this thing out to see if it's as good as what he says. Um, I mean, I mean he, it, like, he showed you, gameplay with it, and the dude was hitting 40, 50 kills a match with it. So I know yeah. it's doable. Um, I don't main Hunter, so I probably am going to have some issues, but hey. But yeah, I mean, like, you're hitting people out of uh, the range of the recluse, so it's, I mean, it's a good counter, I think. That's true. I mean, he did talk I, about I, it. I think, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you, no, you're fine. I think, uh, I mean... I'm gonna call. I'm gonna do this a lot throughout this whole thing, and probably in future ones. I remember in D1 where the Thorn was so overpowered in House of Wolves, and that was everyone's main complaint. There, it, a lot of people on the on Reddit would be like, "Oh well, you can't counter it. There's no counter to Thorn." I think that's another reason why the Recluse doesn't get as much. Uh, I mean, like I'm sure people get hate mail and people c- complain about it, but I don't think it gets as much uh, due to it being like. Due to the ability to counter it, um, I mean, if you can, if you can hit your shots, I mean, that's that's a, if you have good aim, that setup you just described, I mean, and you're having problems with people with recluses, I say go for it. You know, that's that's a good. Oh, we're, um, so are we just dubbing it the recluse killer now? 
Yeah, I would. I would. I would say that's a that's a recluse killer right there. <laughs> so the thing that I liked about it, um, just talking about it, and I haven't used it yet, is the fact that it brings other guns that you don't, don't normally use. Um, yeah. I rare. I don't run into people using lemon arc often, much uh... less one ten hand cannons. One tens are really rough to use um but with this combo especially with the lucky pants the um i don't know if we're probably gonna talk about range drop off at some point but range drop off comes in stages so like at the first stage it loses some uh, a bit of damage second stage it loses a a little bit more damage but it's the same throughout that range basically with this setup even in that second range of range drop off one body shot the opponent would die to the burn from lemon arc so it really extends that. It basically think of it as an extension of the range of, of that one ten yeah. cannon that can hit even further out. Yeah, you're. You're. I mean, you're. I, I. I dig it. I mean, it's something. If I had the bow, I would probably try since I've got a. Uh, uh, a that's right. You're one... still trying to unlock all them forges. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For... I'm, I'm close. I'm close. I, I ran into a problem of uh, playing like playing catch up during uh, Black Armory. And then helping other people catch up. And, like, by the time, like, Season of the Drifter started, like, I was just, I was fine. <laughs> Season of the Drifter is kind of when I took a break, too. Um, had a lot of stuff going on at home. Had, other games came out that I was interested in. So I took a good break from Season of the Drifter. And that's part of why I didn't have so much uh, Drifter gear. Because I didn't yeah. really do the stuff. But um, the forges, I need to unlock them on my other characters too. I just do them on my Titan when I'm wanting I, to get new yeah. rolls of certain weapons. I wish uh, I wish forges were a count line. <laughs> um, join the club. Everybody wishes that after that after they found out that they're not. Same thing with like uh, the the talisman for the Dreaming City. I, that was kind of I annoying. Just... It's just uh, tedious, you know. But um, if I'm going to yeah. be completely honest, I haven't even finished my third sub- subclass on my warlock because I rather play hunting I than actually, warlock. <laughs> since, I had, <laughs> since I was <laughs> since I was helping people, uh, you know, run Forsaken and stuff, I took full advantage of uh, doing my talisman while they had to do theirs on my other two characters. Nice. Uh, nice. My, t- my titan sitting at I think five oh five still. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> We talked about uh, builds. Let's focus in a little bit. Let's talk about some weapon balance. Uh, scout rifles. What do you think? Uh, I think they occupy a very crowded um, area. Uh, what I to mean is, least. yeah, they they share uh, the same kind of... I mean, like, so scout rifles, obviously you're not using scout rifles to kill people up close, so in that kind of range of scout rifles you have snipers which which can one shot kill uh if you're hitting headshots you have bows which i I, honestly i think bows are a bit more i i think they're smoother than scouts personally but um you've got pulse rifles which i mean pulse rifles are another meta ish kind of uh gun arch type but I think scouts just suffer from the fact that there is just so much. There are so many different gun types in Destiny 2 that it, they kind of get lost in the fray currently. I mean, they haven't really touched them since the uh, the Mita changes, right? I'm pretty sure that's right. I, I, they want to. They may have had a few tweaks, but nothing extremely nothing noticeable to... to make them where they come back to yeah. something that you see often. Um, I know me personally. I actually like them. I like the high impact. Uh, I used to um, kind of jump in here. Um, when the last word came out, I used to pair it. People were like, oh, pair it with a bow, pair it with a sniper rifle. I tried it with a, a high-impact scout rifle. I think I, I had it with a cut and run with okay. like firmly planted in something else, and it just hit like a truck. Right. And it, the pairing worked really well because I could use my last word up close, and I could use the scout rifle at a distance. I mean, it, it works. It's not to say that they're not viable, um, and if you're comfortable with them, like Tibber likes to uh, tell me, if you're comfortable with them, you should use it. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Now we're talking. Um, I think uh, I think they can have a space if you like them, but I think they need some love. Um, I can I'm agree honest. to the fact that they need some love. Like m- me personally, there's only two that I use: one in the in the kinetic slot, one in the energy slot. Um, opening dim right now while we're looking. 
I don't uh, even think I have any. <laughs> I have a Khaleesi and Noblesse from the from the raid that I love. Thing rolled with corkscrewed rifling, appended mag, outlaw, and rampage. And the fun thing about the scout rifle at its range, it can three tap to the head, Oof. which is that's a sounds like my cut and run. It's uh, <laughs> it's the same archetype. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like, yeah. uh, it should be a one fifty. I believe that's so. My, yeah, that's what my cut and run is. Uh, I've got a. Uh, yeah. While you're looking, I have. Uh, I actually kept my cut and run apparently. Uh, so it's got opening shot and firmly planted. Oh, on that it. opening shot it extends that range yeah. out. Nice, yeah. I bet. With uh, ricochet rounds and uh, its uh, masterwork is stability. So I mean, like it's it's not a bad gun. Like if you can pair it with something. And... What I I actually have a video up um, where I use the cut and run for my range, and I use the chaperone for my close up. And I played a rumble match with it, and I was losing. I was losing pretty bad. And I got my rhythm going and everything, and I ended up winning the rumble match with it, which it was a sweaty match. Like we were all real close, so they could did do well at least the high impact. Um, personally, if I'm gonna talk about changes, what I would say, high uh, high impact, leave it alone. It can three tap. The range is good. It's in a good spot. Yeah. The one below it, the medium impact, it needs to have a slight damage increase. And your, yeah. uh, uh, no, a slight rate of fire increase. Keep the damage where oh. it is, because I want to say that it can three tap to the head too. It just has a slower fire rate. Mm. And then the lowest uh, one, all I would do, give it a damage increase, keep the fast rate of fire, and it everything would be fine as far as scout rifles go. They'd be viable. So you would even buff the uh, the Mita then too. The my well I, exotics I kind of think are gonna go special case yeah because I think that I've, I'm almost positive that the way Bungie has their thing set up that exotics get buffed separately I could be wrong that would... I have no idea how they go things but I would leave Mida kind of the way it is because I can see it I've run into it enough times that it is still viable the same thing with Jaded Rabbit like if you if you're playing Equinox you're gonna see somebody using Jade Rabbit. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I've seen that a couple of times. I've seen it there and somewhere else. I'm not sure where, but um, I haven't seen many Midas at all. Uh, I know uh, Legendary was using one the other day, but that's because his RNG is bad. <laughs> but um, the one I liked, um, I don't I've actually a lot preferred of, uh, it over Midas. It was a in a season. Uh, it was year one of Destiny Two uh, when they had the faction rallies, which I miss terribly. Those were so fun. I uh, wish they would at least bring back factions at a D1 capacity, but uh, go that ahead. would be nice. Um, <laughs> Something. Future World More guns, had, please. Future World had a, a uh, scout rifle that took, filled up the energy slot that was the same archetype as the Mida, and it rocked uh, a range scope with Flared at Magwell and Rampage. It didn't have random rolls, so every gun had this thing. Yeah. But things that at 60 impact had a 49 range. Um, by comparison, the Calicia Noblesse that I have has a 79 range. So it's a, it's still pretty far out there, but that fast rate of fire was really nice. Uh, yeah. the, it, the aim assist on it is sitting at 76. That's um, a solid gun. Oh, it was a great gun. Like I used that and a auto and it just made everything great. Like I had no issues playing Crucible with that. It was my go-to loadout. Um, the auto I paired it with. I have th 263 kills with the auto, and oh wow, 263 kills with the <laughs> the scout rifle. Uh, talk about that. that for symmetry. That's uh, that's crazy. <laughs> I love me some crucible. What can I say? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, so. I, I think they need a bit of love, um, uh, something to kind of make them special. There's a couple uh, different guns that I think would fall into that kind of category that we could talk about uh, in the future, potentially. Um, even, I mean, we could do it now too if you want. I mean, we could. I think, uh, I think uh, things like sidearms and uh, I think. I think auto rifles could use a little bit of love. Um, 
Sidearms could use a little bit too, but subs as well. Submachine guns are solid. Um, well, the not all. Of it them. depends. Yeah, uh, some of them, like uh, obviously the recruiter. The, can't talk. Uh, the recluse exists, and it's super great and wonderful, and everyone uses it who can get it. Um, but I think there are a lot of other uh submachine guns so like for example before uh forsaken dropped i used to run a antiope antiope d okay. and a a um oh god what's that exotic uh the exotic pulse rifle that uh shoots like black holes uh, uh graviton lance yes that i used to run the two of them together well that one got uh, nerfed in the ground and that's why nobody talks yeah. about it anymore yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was it was a wonderful setup. I loved it because you could use the sub up close and the pulse rifle had like the range of a scout rifle. I mean it was OP, but and it needed some tweaking, but <laughs> I mean more more I think more things need to become viable and then you'll see a bit more uh variety. Variety in the meta. Um I mean I know that, that balance is hard and there's always going to be that top tier meta gun. But so you know, from what I'm gathering, you're saying buffs, not nerfs. You're wanting weapons yeah, buffed, I, not anything nerfed. I mean, some some things. I, I'm not opposed to nerfs, so some things would have to. I, I feel like definitely need tweaks. Um, but I like I like the, I like wording it that way. I like saying yeah. tweaks over nerfs because nerf yeah. implies that it's going to be horrible afterwards. And yeah, the, exactly. The, in anything that we're talking about, we're not wanting it horrible. We're wanting it still yeah. viable. Everything should be viable. So, like, I know a bunch of dudes. I've seen them on Twitter. I've seen them on uh, on the Crucible Playbook Reddit. I've seen them on the normal Reddit. The scout rifles just aren't viable at all, for example. Like, they're just not viable, period. Like, they just don't have fun using them, and that's what they love to use. There's no reason that they have should have to wait for the, for the meta or whatever to come back around. Everything should kind of have a niche and a place, and I know it's hard because of, you know, map design and just the sheer number of different um, gun gun types and archetypes and all that kind of stuff. But things need to kind of, I don't know, people need to play how they want to be able to play. Um, whether that be the meta or be, you know, a synergy type build, you know, use what you want when you want. But Exactly. Use whatever. Don't apologize. That's one of the things that the guys from Crystal Radio said that if it's in the game, it's there. use it. Uh use and abuse <laughs> exactly like it's the, uh, don't feel bad about using something that is considered bad i mean if you're good with it go ahead um yeah, like, my, uh, titans you know they're bad but you oh, know tipper still uses them. my I'm heart kidding. <laughs> I'm, kidding, so, I'm kidding while we're talking about this let's talk about some play play style stuff real quick right. I got position that. over gun choice which is more important uh, um this is a tough decision so if we're talking quick play i'm gonna say gun choice um if we're talking comp i i mean it's honestly i feel like the the right answer if i is a, a, a bit of both uh but if i have to pick one or the other and base it around like play modes uh, i'd say positioning 100 percent in comp Hundred percent, because being in the right spot, being able to flank or whatever, pulling off, you know, or drawing fire while your teammates flank or whatever, you know, whatever you're doing, is, I think that's going to be more important than just running around with a recluse. You know, you could have a bunch of dudes running around with the crew, uh, the recluse, but have a bunch of dudes running around with that build uh, Tibber was talking about earlier, who are better positioned and not using meta guns and beat you. You know, um, I can I can agree to with you that it, it does play a part in both. But what I, I the way when I play, this is just me preference. I try and play with an objective, not necessarily even if it's a just clash match. I play thinking, OK, what am I working on in this match? Am I working on just trying to get my KD up? Where am I dying less than that? And mm -hmm. then my number of kills. Am I trying to play to position myself better to help my team? Because there's matches that you'll see me play and 
I have one of the lower KDs on the team. But I stopped three supers along the way. I did. Oh. I, I uh, kept my our points in our control and in, in a control match. There's things that you that happen that your stats don't show you, and that's what the important part oh, of the yeah. match. I feel. I that hundred percent. Um, I agree. Though I mean, there are things on the stat sheet that don't count. Um, if. Uh, God, I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> So positioning though like you you um positioning i mean if you're looking at things to work on through the match i i dig it i i do the same thing so i'll go in i mean for example i got my uh, service revolver yesterday i played a couple of crucible matches before we decided to talk uh and you know it was just kind of just getting used to the kick getting used to the gun itself i mean i kind of try and go in saying okay you know we're gonna you know, I'm going to hold this this side of the map or this lane or whatever. Right. Um, I think that, you know, that works and just kind of uh, getting accustomed to things. But if we're talking straight positioning versus gun choice, uh, as far as are we talking wins or just improving? Well, um, when I'm saying positioning over gun choice, which one do you feel like affects, for example, let's set it in a comp setting. All right. When, we, when you're playing, which do you think makes a better bigger impact on the outcome of the match the fact that i picked the recluse over using another energy weapon or the fact that i positioned myself well enough that i was able to use whatever inner weapon i chose and use it to the best of its ability positioning hands down 100 percent position i can yeah. agree with that. um uh, um gun choice i mean it's tough i feel like the right answer still is a hybrid of the two but if I'm picking, if I have to pick, like, gun to my head, I'm going to go position. Um, I think gun choice matters because, I mean, there are always going to be, with the way Bungie updates from Destiny 1, from Year 1, to now, there is always something that is going to be the gun. <laughs> I, like, guns, I, like, yeah. I like the all caps to that. <laughs> the gun. The gun. Yeah, yeah. There, it's going to be the gun for the meta until they update the sandbox. Uh, it's just how it is. I mean, I, ideal world, everything would be viable, and, but it's not. And there's always going to be that gun. So, right. so it, I mean, like, positioning, 100% factor. And like I said, I mean, the guys using, you know, which, you know, the Lucky Pants, the Bow, and the 110 could be better positioned to, you know, they're playing their lanes, they're using their range to beat your recluse. And the recluse is the gun for right now. I know we keep talking about it. It's the gun for now. And they could beat you. They could beat you simply because they're positioned better. I mean, that's a great uh, synergistic uh, setup. But at the same time, they're playing, you know, they're playing to their strength. They're using their positioning more than they're using, uh, you know, meta. I, I think positioning is 100% more important. I mean, especially uh, playing comp as a solo player. Like, yeah. when you play I solo... Mean, you play and you aren't really communicating with that other team unless they jump no, into fire of. team chat. You kind of got to get a feel of what that other team's doing. And yeah. one of the things that I like doing when I play comp is I hang back. I like to snipe and whatnot, but by me sniping, it actually anchors the spawn onto our side so that even if my team gets downed over there, they're going to spawn back over here with me and I we can reset up because they're not we're not forcing a spawn flip because i'm hanging back and i'm yeah. uh, unless destiny decides to do something wacky and spawn a guy behind me which <laughs> that happened it has happened and <laughs> i spawned a guy the right dude and it was amazing it was, i want to find that clip but i think i may have not have been recording it at that time um yeah i mean but i mean that all ties in uh, even that uh, yeah, that note position. Yeah. ties into positioning but it all even that just type ties into like things steps to, to take to get better in the crucible yeah mindset it, it plays into a mindset Re um, recording yeah. your matches watching them afterwards seeing uh, what you were doing what uh if you can remember what you were thinking at that time um mental tax is what a lot of people refer to it as is the tax that it takes for you to look at the screen aim and pull the trigger um if you have things going on around you, distracting you, I mean, I know it sounds kind of overkill. I mean, it's just a video game, but I mean, 
is if you want to if we like you go to play is actually to play high level comp that's just a mindset that you're gonna have to have otherwise you're not gonna get it's re- it's not that you're not gonna get there it's just gonna be a really difficult road to getting there and nobody wants to take the difficult road oh yeah i mean i mean that i think that's another reason uh i mean nobody wants to take the difficult road that's uh that's another reason there will always be the gun that's also <laughs> true too because uh, uh, uh by de-, de facto, if you pick something that's non-meta, yeah, you're going to have a d- more difficult time, unless it's something that you are already comfortable with. Um, example, me with uh, sniping. Um, I sniped with Twilight Oath before it became meta. Before it became me- before sniping became a thing. Before the Revoker was announced, I was sniping a full month before that happened. And when they announced Revoker and it became available in game, I was like, "This is my gun." Because I was already sniping, and yeah. at a time when people were complaining about flinch and everything else, I was already on that, and I was already used to that. So yeah, I mean, if it if was nice can, to uh, be on the on the cutting edge of that, to be on, like, okay, this is the what's uh, popular now. Hey, I'm already here. I've been here for years. Yeah. Come at me. Where, where are you guys been? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, like it was really nice to be able to say. <laughs> revoker i don't need no revoker oh i that i'm not so sure on because now when i try and go back to twilight oath it's really hard revokers feels really nice it doesn't have a lot of aim assist so yeah. it's, it's it's really nice and it, the uh, perk i know a lot of that was a lot of people's complaints like why make it give me the bullet back I'm, it's rewarding me for missing my shot it's rewarding you for trying to take a shot that you wouldn't normally yeah. take yeah that's why i look um, at it but uh yeah, mindset and matches, I, man. That's something I really oh, like yeah. to, uh, like I to mean, us to come back to in uh, in future episodes where we talk about the mental tags in. and everything. We're definitely going to touch touch on it next episode, but we got to cut Stay it here. Otherwise, all... we're going to be talking about this all day. Oh yeah. But uh, <laughs> here we go. This has been episode one of Seven CR. Uh, my name's Tibbercat. You can catch me at twitch.tv forward slash Tibbercat. I also have a YouTube channel under the same name if y'all want to catch me there. Catch me at Twitter. If you have anything that y'all want to add in, we are going to have our Discord link down in the description of the YouTube video so you can It'll, check uh... us there, submit some clips, talk some gun rolls, hang out with us. If y'all want to have some topics that you want us to talk about, submit them there as well, or you can submit to us on either of our Twitters. Bates, uh, where can they find you at? The, uh... Uh, well, you can find me uh, at uh, Fates underscore Pyro, uh, Twitch, Twitter, uh, pretty much everywhere. Um, I have the same name uh, other than my PSN, but it's because I'm dumb. Um, <laughs> you can also, uh, the Discord link will also be available. I'll probably pin it on the Twitter, uh, so it'll be there as well. Uh, you can follow the podcast itself uh, uh, at uh, Seventh Column radio on twitter uh probably add in a couple other social medias as uh, as we go and uh but yeah uh yeah that's uh that's, that's gonna be I it got. for us we'll yeah. catch y'all later